Hey gang, welcome to this week's episode of the Inside Wag Nutrition Podcast. This week we're going to check up on Chris. We're going to do part two of Chris's winter massing slash bulking phase. We're going to talk a little bit more in depth about how things have been going, uh, some other tips and tricks that uh, I've been using as a coach to help him get the most out of this massing phase, and overall just how he's feeling. So um, yeah, if that interests you, please stay tuned. Also, if you want to join Working Against Gravity, sign up at workingagainstgravity.com backslash join. And use the code InsideWag at checkout for $50 off your first month. On with the show. Oof. Hey, Chris. What's up? Hey, Josh, not much, dude. <laughs> Having a good Tuesday. Good. How about yourself? Yeah, I know we're recording on Tuesday. It's crazy. Yeah, right? We normally do Thursdays, but uh, switching it up this week. Switching it up to, uh, today. This week. Switching it up this week. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, how Chris is doing with his uh, bulking face. Yeah, uh, yeah, part two. Little, little. Uh, I don't want to, what do you want to say, like a virtual check-in? Maybe not a virtual check more of a... Just the conversation between two coaches on, yeah. on I mean, how this phase is going. I'm not virtually here. I'm really here. <laughs> oh, and I'm really here. We and Josh is really here. We are virtually Yeah, we are here. not AI-created <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> podcast hosts. <laughs> we are virtually connecting yes. in, our res- yes. in our respective uh, places. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Something like that. Something yeah. Like that. yeah, it's the universe. Uh, it's it's that curtain in the background that Chris has. The universe. It's making me. Yeah. It's twisting me up. I'm like, man, I'm thinking about my place in the universe all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. The yeah. infinite vastness. <laughs> the infinite vastness. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, let's talk about it. How have you been doing over the past? What is it? Four weeks now? Three weeks? Um. Yeah, I think. Um. So I've had two check. Begins with you, I believe. That's yeah, right. Yeah. We so started weekly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yep, yep. Um, yeah, we kind of did an initial weekly thing, and now it's like we're just doing bi-weekly. Um, that's really what I think I need, you know. And I yeah, think that we're just like respecting each other's time and all that good stuff. So, yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I figured I was just kind of kind of go through the details, like kind of like talk about nutrition, talk about the training part, and talk about the results and how I'm feeling. Yeah. And, uh, this will be a rather quick update. Um. Because again, this is going to be an ongoing saga over the next uh, <laughs> remaining four months through April, That's right? Um, until I uh, cut and then reveal all this hard work. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah just to get into it, then. So, um, at least on my side, I'm nutrition. I, I, I've been complying to macros mm-hmm. at least ninety percent or higher most days of the week. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, I've experiencing a handful of higher fat days due to social things and and just kind of like you know just going with the flow, having to do my best and just being okay with those things. Cause again, I am in a surplus of calories. I am trying to uh, abate and minimize fat gain, Mm -hmm. but I'm also making sure I'm eating, um, and and enjoying that process too. So, um, and you had mentioned like, Hey, we got to watch out for these kind of higher fat days and, you know, uh, inevitably you kind of bumped my carbs up, which I imagined from a coaching perspective, (laughs) was a means to say let's give this guy more food so that he can better control the ne- that negative surplus of additional calories that can come from fat because yeah. there's twice as many calories in a gram of fat yeah so. yeah yeah that's that's definitely part of it the, the other part of it is that um i've had i mean this is this could be just me as a coach and what i've experienced i mean i've experienced this personally and when i take people on a massing phase they've experienced this as well and there's literature to support it that a higher protein higher carbohydrate wow higher protein <laughs> higher carbohydrate jeez why is that word so hard for me today carbohydrate carbohydrate <laughs> high protein high carbohydrate there we go got it and a lower fat protocol tends to be a better massing strategy now overall it's calories in calories out like we all know that but i but i've found again from experience uh both in myself and with other people that higher protein and higher carbs uh just put people in a more anabolic state um Mm. and there is literature again to support that um so when i see chris is really really high on fats um i want to encourage him to take those calories and just like he just said 
and allocate those into carbs. So therefore, what we did was we upped his carbohydrate intake and gave him a little bit more space there um, to include more lean carbs uh, and not focus so much on fats to get his calories up. So that's kind of like where, where that was going and where that comes from. Yep. So yeah, I'll be that because I was at what I think three fifty, three seventy five, something like that before three seventy. Um, yeah, three seventy. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise, but I was like, oh, four hundred grams of carbs. I've been here in a minute. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, let's do it. You yeah. know, and um, yeah, it's funny because uh, yeah, you know, I'm doing my best to hit the two hundred grams of protein, and uh, I'm honestly pretty impressed with how well I'm doing with that. Yeah, Just kind I agree. Of coming from like a one fifty to one seventy five gram uh, per day state uh, for so long. Um, and it's actually enjoyable. So like last night, you know, like kind of my day got away from me because like I said, I was helping a friend set up some stuff in his home gym and all these things and came back. And so my day kind of got a little off, but like 11 o'clock last night, 11 PM, <laughs> I'm eating a big old ham, turkey, turkey, pepperoni, Colby Jack cheese <laughs> sandwich with a bowl of like sliced peaches with some cinnamon on it just to get it in. And wow. then after that, I ate a big ass bowl of raisin bran with oat clusters and almond milk. And I was finishing that by midnight because I was just like, I, I'm just getting it in. Wow. I'm just making it happen. And wow. so I did. And so, and I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I'm doing what's necessary to not just be like, oh man, I came up shy today. Like, um, you know, when you, che- when I check in this Sunday, yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll see in my logs that like there, there was a couple low days, but for the most part, like, no, I'm doing what it takes to get it in, even if it means, oh no, eating, you know, past 8 p.m. or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, but obviously those things are going to level out. And uh, as we talked about before the show started, um, I got a leg press hack squat machine. Yes. And so I'm super stoked to finally add that to uh, my home gym setup and all that and to be able to, um, you know, get into the training a little harder in, in that regard, but, yeah. um, which I'll expand on in a minute, but to finish up the nutrition mm-hmm. piece of it. So really the only thing I wanted to mention on this was like, I've just been keeping my meals super simple. Like you just heard it like a sandwich, easy to adjust all the portions on there, easy yep. to keep it low fat, um, easy to add some carbs to it, like fruit, vegetables, yeah. whatever. Um, keeping it super simple, um, making it convenient, like night, uh, uncle Ben's or whatever store bought, uh, the rice. Man, 90 second rice, yep. right? Like Jasmine rice, cilantro, lime rice, making burrito bowls every week. I'm making taco meat in large portions. So I can not only have a meal for that night, but like leftovers for the next day. Cause I just, I'm reaching into my fridge and I'm just executing. I'm not thinking yeah. about what I need to eat. It's just like, I need protein. I need carbs. I need fat. Here's how much I need per meal because I'm trying to keep an even spread. Like every one of my meals, I'm eating three to four times per day. They have to have a minimum of 100 grams of carbs or more. It's just, <laughs> or it's not going to happen, you know? Right. So, um, so yeah, so just really enjoying that. Um, <laughs> and just honestly, the simplicity of it all. <laughs> I mean, like you know? lis- listening to this, if, if you've never, if you've never thought about, you know, obviously there's, there's more to it than just eating a lot of food. Like Chris is going to talk about sure. training and, and, you know, and he just spoke about how th- he, he is controlling his diet. It's just that he's eating a lot. So, mm-hmm. so I mean, that just sounds great. Doesn't it mm-hmm. sound like a good way to live your life? Like yeah. to focus on like <laughs> building muscle and, and taking a break from always trying to just be less. Mm-hmm. People want less. I want to be s- smaller. I want to be skinnier. I want to be leaner, like all this stuff. And of course, you know, that's, that's all good. Having goals like that mm-hmm. is good, but like taking some time, especially around the holidays that, I mean, we're in the midst of it right now, especially when this oh, comes yeah. out, we're going to be, I mean, we're, we're right in the heart of it all. Mm-hmm. And Chris really doesn't have to worry about too much. You know, he has yeah. to, he has to <laughs> think ahead and be like, Hmm, like how, you know, what kind of choices are going to be there? You know, if he's going to go someplace or what, what are yep. my options going to be, but he can make a ton of stuff fit. Um, and uh, he can he can come out. I mean, he's he's still just sticking to his goals, and he's he's doing what he knows is right. And um, mm-hmm. he's just yeah, he's just going about it. And, and you can do it too. <laughs> yeah, don't have to and always... I don't want this process to be all for none. And that's, that's the right. biggest thing is like I want this to work. Yeah, and I can't expect it to work if I'm not willing to do the work. Yeah. So being yeah. on the that, that's that's an interesting point too. Is there's there's people that have trouble doing a massing phase because they can't let go of wanting to be lean. And yeah. so they're in the middle. So they're like, 
kind of eating a lot, but they're not really like embracing it. And they're mm. like, oh, you know, and I'm I'm so full and I'm not like I'm not gaining or I'm not I'm not progressing. I don't see the scale change and things like that. And it's like, well, you're you're eating to to mass, but your brain is still you're, you're still in like cutting mode. Mm. You're like you're in this weird spot, like where you're not really enjoying this process, <laughs> but you're also not enjoying the the other process because this process is, is dr- in direct con- contradiction. Mm-hmm. And it's, so it's, <laughs> yeah. it's really tricky. And I, I mean, I'm sure you've done this too, Chris, but you spend oh, time yeah. trying to get people to um, change that mindset and be like, just mm-hmm. focus on this one thing for the next, you know, six weeks or, or eight weeks, however long you're going to do it. Embrace it. Embrace yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, what's the, what's the saying? Like, uh, trying to ride two horses with one ass or something <laughs> like that or chase <laughs> chase two rabbits yeah. you know at once and okay. like, so yeah you're, you're probably going to go hungry because you're not going to catch either yeah. one of them and that's exactly yeah. what this is what this is like well, i mean that's exactly what chris is not doing but it's what a right. lot of people do do um mm-hmm. and uh yeah. when you commit to something <clears throat> like yeah commit go for it and and, and with a coach and granted me and chris know each other and we're both coaches and mm-hmm. we've been doing this for a while but like if you've never done anything like this before like having a coach just be like it's cool this is how it's supposed to go and here's how we're going to progress and like kind of lead you through it like that's that's the magic of it all you know yeah (laughs) let me take care of the the details yes Uh, it is just simply your job to execute yeah on the parameters that i'm providing you exactly to just keep showing up do your best um love the process and uh you know give it your all and be solely and focused on this because it is like you said uh, I think there's another version of that is like the person who tries to travel down two roads at once goes nowhere. Yeah. Same thing. Similar yep. thing. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, yep. And uh, that's what I'm not trying to do because the beautiful <laughs> yeah. part about this, everyone, like folks listening is this is that like at the end of this bulking phase, I cut, yeah. you know, I cut any body fat that I've earned and it's going to be an even easier, simpler process to do that because of the discipline I gave the bulk. I can then give these short, four to six, maybe eight week phase, depending on what I decide or what we yeah. decide together. Um, and just go into a, an aggressive deficit for fat loss, <clears> maintain <throat> the muscle mass, the body fat sheds. I'm ready to chill for the summer and just maintain over summer. And, uh, again, like we talked about before, that's in alignment with how I prefer to live my life. So I'm not yeah. dieting all the time. Yeah. Um, so it is the building of the base, the muscle, look at muscle as your base, mm-hmm. your foundation for youth, your foundation for wanting a tone lean, look, yeah. you know, like, um, Yes, you can lose weight and build muscle at the same time. It is a slow process. Uh, it, it happens quicker for newbies, but more advanced people, you know, they have to go through these phases or you're not, you're just not going to experience that same level of change that you once did. And that's okay because that's not even a reasonable expectation any longer. Right. But in order to enact a change, you have to be committed to the process of going through that phase intentionally <clears throat> following the orders, <laughs> following the directions, you know, it's like, you're not going to assemble that Ikea furniture. If you just go into it and just kind of think, you know what you're going to do yeah. and just wing it because you know what the end result's supposed to look like. You have to follow the, the directions and the instructions yeah. or you're going to miss something or there's going to be leftover parts when you're done or whatever, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. the analogy I kind of have in my head too. So, um, but yeah, to, but to move on into the next portion, which is the training. So yes. I've been continuing to lift for four times per week on the Gambaro method. Loving that. Um, I actually started phase two. So I completed my first month of training. I'm now in my second month of training. Um, the last time I trained, I will admit, was last Wednesday. I was doing like cable crossover type things and I got this pull in my trap. Oh, and it's no. just one of those things where like, everything hurts yeah. you know like there's just no position you can be in or movement you can make where you're just not reminded of this thing and so i've had an impingement been trying to treat that work that out i'm feeling better today i'm going to get back to training today um and that's great uh but i've been continuing to hit my calories and just you know i haven't been like well i'm not training so i'm not going to eat the same amount of food it's like no nah. yeah keeping it going steady Good. and I'm, I'm fine i'm just cruising um, as I said, I got the leg press hack squat machine. So I'm excited to actually be able to follow the training as prescribed, you know, when like hack squats come up, I'm not doing more of a, uh, bicycle stance thing with elevated heels, right. and narrow, uh, knees. Um, and with a barbell on my back, I actually have a hack squat machine where I can load up with 45 pound weights, get the foot positioning now, um, on there. And then I could do like unilateral leg presses and things like that. So I'm makes really excited to not have to make the, um, switch exercises in the app. I'm actually able to do as Eugene has prescribed it for me. And so that's even more exciting because I have yet 
in any of my attempts in the past of following this training for whatever purposes at the time, I've never been able to do it quite as prescribed. Yeah. But now with this addition of this equipment, all bets are off, baby. Like it's on. And I'm so (laughs) excited about how thick and strong my legs are going to get from having this. Yeah. And honestly, taking a break from squats, like squats are great. I love squats, but leg press (laughs) back squat machine is a totally different animal. It is. I see the unlimited amount of bias you can put on the muscles that you're trying to stimulate in those movements is absurd. And the weight that you can push is so much more than you can on a barbell squat. Yeah. And so while also protecting knees, ligaments, yeah, I was gonna say, that's, that's, that's the big <laughs> thing. Decreasing is, injury. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, when you get, when you start to get really heavy with your squats and especially if you're trying to like pump the frequency, like it's not, yeah. it's not the leg muscles. It's going to go, it's probably going to be like a joint. It's probably going to be like your, your back, yeah, your can. hips or your knees or so, something. It's just going to get achy, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so, um, having the leg press is like a huge, huge advantage, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's killer. And, and Chris sent me a video of his home gym. Um, I wish I wish there was a way that we could like show that in the in the video or something. You know um, I'm, not, I'm gonna try that in this next edit. Let yeah. me try. Let me mess around and let me move. Yeah, Maybe we'll, we'll do we'll something see. different for this this uh, YouTube version yeah. of the podcast. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we'll see if we can do that. Um, I'll do a picture in picture. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, we we never really I know we didn't really talk about that, but just before the podcast episode. Mm-hmm. Um, just before we started recording, he texted me and he's like, "Hey, check this out." And it was like a nice little walkthrough of his home gym, and it's a sweet little home gym. It's uh, mm-hmm. pretty cool. Something if you have a home gym, I mean, your home gym might be cool as well. But this is definitely one to like aspire to. I mean, it's got the cable machines and a big power rack, squat rack. Now this leg press machine, it's pretty sweet. So yeah, mm-hmm. hopefully we can get it in there. That'd be cool to show people. Yeah, man, it's my Mojo Dojo Casa house. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm super stoked about that. So uh, like you said, because you were like, how's it feel? Is it a smooth operation? I'm like, I tried it once when I bought it off the guy when it was all dirty and dusty from yeah. being in his basement. And I haven't even used it once since I've set it up and cleaned it and made sure everything was lubed and the balls are rolling smoothly. You know, I'm just, that's how anal I am about stuff. Like this is mine now and I'm going to treat it as such. So, Good. Um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, as far as like the, you know, training, like I am feeling stronger every week. I am putting more weight on the dumbbells, the barbell, whatever it calls for, like yep. weight is going up. I'm doing it as prescribed. I'm pushing through the suck. I'm, you know, hitting the the rep schemes as they need to be. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, pushing to failure while keep making sure, you know, that I'm getting full range of motion, yeah. um, you know, and staying um, injury averse um, at the same time. So um, all the stimulus is there. I'm feeling fuller, um, you know, kind of going into the results now. So like my frame yeah. is filling out, clothes are fitting a little differently. Uh, but in that more of that exciting way of like, yeah. you know, uh, I'm noticing other people are kind of noticing, um, but also I'm still, I'm not getting much body fat. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I got a little yeah. bit of a pud around my belly, which is like, whatever, but it's mm-hmm. like, again, there'll be a time to take care of that. Yeah, for sure. And it's, yep. yeah, I mean, I, I've obviously doing a, Chris's check-ins. Um, you can see it in the pictures, like in, mm-hmm. and when it comes to massing and when it comes to like <laughs> gaining size, like pictures are going to be really helpful because yeah. you can sometimes you can see the changes um, before you see the changes like on the scale, and the yeah. scale like isn't necessarily like what what I like to do is <clears throat> excuse me as I like to try and keep the gains each week to like point three, or I'm sorry point like point two to like point four. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you're a little bit heavier, like if, if Chris was already starting like over 200 pounds, maybe we would go a little bit higher than that. But yeah, 0.2 to like 0.4 pounds per week generally tends to mitigate a ton of fat gain. It's not going to mitigate fat gain altogether, but no. it's going to be helpful in uh, making sure that I'll, as much of his gain is like a lean muscle gain. Um, yes. So – Yes, the scale is important because I, as the coach, will use that as a metric. I really don't want Chris to focus too much on that because I want Chris to eat, yep. have fun training because he's getting stronger. His weights are going up. You know, he's pushing more weight. Um, his recovery is really good. He's got good energy. All these things, all great things, yeah. you know. So I don't want him to step on the scale and be like, uh, you know, to fight the urge to be like, ah, like I, I no. gained weight. And <laughs> that's what we want to do, you know. But going back right. to what we were talking about earlier – 
mentally that can be kind of a hurdle for some people um sure chris is not one of those people but for a lot no. of people it is so it can be yeah. yeah so really really important those pictures chris taking a look at himself in the mirror being like hey like my shoulders yeah i'm i'm kind of coming together this is sweet you know that's yeah. really assuring and a motivating thing um, oh yeah so well yeah, yeah it's, it's, all it's good. tough to be disappointed by anything happening on the scale when i'm like touching my arm and i'm going like I'm not feeling any softness. Yeah. <laughs> like this is hard. It's filled out. Like yeah. what's up with this tricep, you know, on this back of my arm? Like I didn't know that muscles could be here. You know, yeah, like yeah. when I'm feeling those changes in my body and seeing different vascularity and stuff happening, it's just like that feedback is far more uh, contributing to the positive aspect. But the good news is my weight is going up. Yes. And so <laughs> yes. um, I think before at our initial uh, bulking uh, part one, mm -hmm. Uh, we did was I was kind of trending around 185, 186. It's kind of like yeah, my yeah. body's set point, like years of data. That's where I've cruised. And now I'm kind of starting to lean into the 189, 190 ranges. Yeah. Um, and that's holding steady. So like, awesome. I think you're going to be impressed at checking on Sunday just to see those yeah. averages and go like, look at that. Just, just steady yeah. climbing, you know? Um, so that's what it's about. Yep. My walking tapered a little bit. My daily step count tapered a little bit in the past week, just weather stuff and the other things going on and yeah. kind of just shifting priorities to getting stuff done, my garage stuff, helping a buddy do his, um, things like that. But this week, things are looking nice. I've got a new podcast. I got into that Rob Reiner, Who Killed JFK podcast. With oh. Ryan that recently came out, and I am immersed in it. So I'm waiting for those <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday drops to go use them as an excuse to go put, you know, two loops around the lake and all that stuff. And uh taking my dogs for daily walks. So, you know, uh, sleeping great, no problem with sleep. Just awesome. Sleeping beautifully, sleeping hard, waking up, feeling rested, ready to get into the day. Wow. Um, it's great. And yeah, and that's it, man. I mean, things are going <laughs> great <laughs> so far. So good. Um, yeah, cool. definitely excited to train today. I'm excited to eat today. Um, excited to check in with you on Sunday. Cool. And, uh, get your feedback, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. I think that, uh, the, the biggest thing again, like when, when we first started, um, and then the first couple of weeks was just getting Chris to just focus a little bit more on like higher, higher carbohydrates on a regular basis. Like it, his, his calorie counts are still like within reason. It's not like he's eating like a ton of fat and he's like blowing everything out of the water, but it's like, we, we want to just like, we wanted to tighten up a little bit in that aspect make sure that the calories are coming from the right sources. Um, yeah. And he's been able to do that really well. Um, and so, yeah, mm -hmm. this this will be the first check-in in two weeks. Uh, we'll take a look at it and uh, see hey, see how things are going. And that's it. Yeah. And we'll yeah. be back with another update at, uh, in January's episode. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, we're, yep. yeah, we're getting to the end of December. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's wild. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, gang. Well, uh, yeah, when this uh, episode comes out, we'll be uh, not, I mean, not too long from now, but we'll be, we'll be knocking on the door of Christmas time. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to give yourself the gift of mass, <laughs> sign up, workingconscribe.com backslash join, and you can use the code inside wag nutrition. No, inside wag, not inside wag nutrition, inside wag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At checkout, you get $50 off your first month of coaching and you can mass, you can gain some muscle with us or you can cut off some fat with us, whatever you mm -hmm. want to do, we can help you get there. Yeah. So, and just as I did in last episodes, uh, when we kicked off this embarking on the six months journey, uh, in the show notes, I provided links to two really great articles that WAG provides too. And I want to mention this, and I'm just going to kind of keep that as the standard in the show notes. Oh, good. Uh, just to have that. So I've got our, uh, two articles. One is the gain train tips for adding muscle mass. And then we've got our macros for your goals. Part two macros for for bulking so awesome um go ahead and click on those links read it <laughs> digest that information uh, maybe apply some of the tips and the tricks and the guidance that we provide um see how it works for you and like josh said if you need that extra level of accountability you're yeah. just like i just need to toss this into the hands of somebody else and i just need to execute come to us code right. inside wag uh we'd love to help you out and uh reach your goals no matter what they are yeah Spot yeah. on, man. Yeah, good call on the, on the uh, articles. That's yeah, super helpful, and those are yeah, yeah those are really solid uh, pieces mm -hmm. of information. So definitely check those out. Um, cool, Chris. Well, good talking to you, man. This is a good one. Yeah, man. Thanks so much, Josh. I appreciate your uh, unending support, man. Yeah, of course. You got it. <laughs> and uh, gang, we'll uh, hope you guys have a good week, and we'll see you next time. Take care.